tables and books and tape. Wins a lot of souls. People just don't realize how many souls they do win, how many people rescue. I don't think we hardly ever go anywhere in the country anymore. So what people comes up, now Gary, you've been with me on a few trips. Say, I bought that tape series up there, it saved my life. And the How to Live and Not Die series. The point of that, you know, I bought that tape series, I bought that book right there, and it saved my life. I was dying with cancer, and it saved my life. Just totally saved my life. Well, it'll save your life, too, if you have to get your mouth straightened out. You've got to get your mouth straightened out. Now, last night I talked to you about, I talked to you last night about uh, uh, talking to the mountains. The Lord wants you to learn to talk to mountains. The Lord told me one time that was a real, real setback for the church. That uh, he, he, he told me he wanted me to teach people how to talk. And I said, I don't even know what you mean, teach people how to talk. He said, well, they don't talk to mountains. He said, they don't talk to mountains. Everything they've got in their life that's causing them heartaches and trouble and defeat, everything they got in their life that's not in the abundant life is a mountain to them. And the devil put it there. And I plainly have told you and told them, whosoever shall say of this mountain, be thou removed from me, and go in the depths of the sea, it shall be done for them. He said, the problem of it is, he says, my children do not talk to mountains. They go to church and listen to sermons and obey very little what they hear. And I want you to teach them to talk to mountains. So I teach people all the time to talk to empty pocketbooks, sick bodies, Confused minds, lost children, talk to them. You have to talk to that mountain you're climbing. And you have to remove it from you. God's not going to remove it, you have to remove it. What you claim in Jesus' name, God's power does the work. God's power don't come out and do the work without you doing anything. You do your own thing, just sit around and wait. No, wait's what broke the wagon down. Did you get that? That'll hit you about twos and you'll turn a flip. Wait's what broke the wagon down. It'll break you down too. Oh well, no, I'm not saying nothing, Brother Noel, but I love the Lord. I'm just waiting to see what God will do. Well, I got, let me tell you, let me tell you what, what you go ahead and do then, if that's what you're going to do. Order the flowers. Pick the quartet. Pick the preacher you want to preach your funeral. Get your spot ready. Get some men, get some men ready with some picks and mattocks to dig the grave. Because that's exactly where you're going to go. And you might as well know that. That's exactly where you're going to go. And you're not going to go anyplace else. You're going to go in the grave. And if you know that, then you better do something about it now. And when you get light upon God's word, God said, I've sent my word to heal you. And when the Lord Jesus Christ says, if you will talk to cancer, it'll disappear from you. Well, my brother and sister, you better open up your mouth and start talking to that mountain called cancer. You understand that? And if you will do it, it'll disappear. But if you don't talk to it, it's not going to disappear. Hey, cancer don't have to obey you. Cancer don't, cancer don't obey your desires. Cancer obeys your voice with authority. Cancer don't obey your desires. It only obeys your voice with authority in Jesus' name. It has to obey that. Well, I don't want cancer, Brother Noah, but I want to live. Well, why don't you talk like it and act like it? Well, I love the Lord. Honey, bluebirds love the Lord. 
Give me a bluebird break. Oak trees love the Lord. You say, really? Oh, yeah. And God said, if you don't praise me and worship me and obey me, he said, I'll just speak to the rocks and trees and let them do it. He said, they'll, they, they love me. You say, I love the Lord, but you don't love him as much as the oak tree does. Isn't that something? You don't love God as much as an oak tree. An oak tree! God says, I spoke to, I speak to an oak tree, and they'll worship me and praise me and wave their limbs if I tell them to. I speak to you and tell you what to do so you can have life and have it more abundantly, and you just sit and look at me. No. My brother and sister, you might as well. <laughs> you might as well know this. God, get this in your brain once and for all. God works with words. Do you understand that? God works with words. That's the reason he's told you, I have sent my word to heal you. I've sent my word to give you instructions where you by you and your household may be saved. I've sent my word to show you and give you instructions how to be baptized in the Holy Ghost and speak with other tongues and speak in the unknown tongue. And God said the first reason I want you to speak in an unknown tongue in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 2, uh, I want you to speak in an unknown tongue is because you talk directly to God and no man understands you. And the second reason I want you to speak in an unknown tongue is that you build yourself up. You build yourself, you edify yourself, meaning you build up, build up, build up. And, and the only problem you've got if you can't walk the floor for a few hours every day or sit in the chair, wherever you can do, and thank the Lord for healing you and call Jesus your healer and tell cancer, I'm talking to you, cancer. You go from me in Jesus' name. Cancer, I'm talking to you. You go to the depths of the sea. Go to the depths of the sea, cancer. I resist you and I command you, turn my body loose and go in the depths of the sea. If you can't do that, after the Lord Jesus gives you perfect instructions and prints them here in the Bible so you read them, if you can't do it, you know the reason why you can't do it? Is because you don't speak in, you don't have enough faith to do it and you don't speak in tongues enough to keep yourself built up where you'll obey God. If you can't do that, you are a disobedient, rebellious Christian and the graveyard is waiting on you. Do you understand that? Is that, is that plain enough? Well, that's what you are. If you don't obey the Lord Jesus Christ, you are a rebellious Christian. And besides that, you're a dumb Christian. Because nobody else in the world can help you. You might as well know that. You're not going to get into help except the Lord Jesus. He's got more sense than the whole world put together. His thoughts as much above high above man's thoughts as the heavens are from the earth. Why wouldn't you respect that and do what he tells you to do? Why wouldn't you? When your whole life, when your life is at stake. What do you care about time? If you're just sitting around with some disease anyway, don't, don't sit around. Speak with authority. You have to come to a place where you'll bypass all religious teaching and call those things that be not as though they were. Romans 4.17 says you have a right to call those things, there's words again, call those things that be not as though they were. Well, if you're sick, why don't you call yourself healthy? Why don't you stand looking in the mirror for about two hours tomorrow, speak it out about 500 times. In Jesus' name, I am healthy. In Jesus' name, I am healthy. In Jesus' name, I am healthy. 
You may have pain racket your body so strong you can't hardly stand it. But just show God you got faith in the midst of the storm. If you will stand in the midst of the storm and say, I call myself healthy. According to Romans 4.17, I call myself healthy. According to Romans 4.17, I have a right to call those things that be not as though they were. Or according to Romans 4.17, I have a right to it. And I call myself strong. I am not weak and I'm not going to be weak. I am strong. I am healthy. I am healthy. I am healthy. And you may be so weak, you have to help your, get your husband or wife to help you in the bathroom and hold on to the counter to say it. But go ahead and say it anyway. You say, well, isn't that a lie? Yes, it is. Who cares about that? It's a heavenly truth. I understand if you're weak. If you're weak and beaten down, I understand if you're weak and you say you're strong. I understand that's a Tennessee lie. But Jesus didn't come from Tennessee. He comes from heaven, thank God, forever. It is true. It's a Tennessee lie. But you have a right. Since you've been born again, you're, this is the way it works, honey, look at me. Since you've been born again, your name was written in heaven. Holly, Miss, Little Miss Houston. Holly, written in heaven. The disease you've got is not in heaven. Your name is there. And through prayer and through faith, you have a right to go into heaven and pull that blessing down from heaven to you on earth. Now this is where you lose it at. Since the time began, nothing from heaven ever come to the earth cheap. You're not going to get God to heal you through cheap faith. You're not going to get God to heal you through lazy faith. You're not going to get God to heal you through nonchalant faith. God will not honor your half-sick, warped, twisted faith. He only honors faith with power and victory, quality, Say what you mean, mean what you say, and quote a scripture with it, and he'll honor it. Romans 4, 17 says, you have a right as a believer to call those things that be not as though they were. Besides that, God said, those that are weak, let them say they're strong. That same principle works for everything. Those that are sick, let them say they're healthy. Those that are broke, let them say they're wealthy. As long as you tell people you're broke, God can't bless you financially. Go get us some bottles tomorrow and sell them. That's about the only thing you're ever going to get. They'll get you a job somewhere. God can't even help you. You just have to get it the best way you can. But you could be broke with no money at all and start calling yourself wealthy and start thanking God. That thanking God for blessing you financially and just praise Him and worship Him every day, worship Him and thank Him for blessing you financially and start calling the Lord Jesus Christ your financial provider. And I'll guarantee you, in six months or a year or two years, uh, man, you won't even be the same person. Some guy told me one time, he says, Lenovo, I believe what you told me and obeyed it for about three months. And nothing ever did happen, so I just quit and started drinking again. God don't promise you victory with three months' faith. You may be so warped religiously, and your mind may be so squirrely, God may have to have you have 
a year and four months and, and 28 days faith before he answers you. But just know this. God is a faith God. And if you show God faith, you can mark it down, brother. If you show God faith and you're claiming something he's promised you in the Bible, I'm not talking about squirrely things. If, you promise, if you're claiming something in the Bible that's right for a believer, if you show God that you will not quit and you will believe that you will not quit, I'll guarantee you God will come to your house and give it to you. And if he don't come, it'll be because of your unbelief and your nonchalant faith and your lazy faith. Lazy faith will put you in an early grave. Quicker than anything I know of. God didn't call you to have lazy faith. God told you that the word of faith is nigh thee even in thy mouth. You say, well, I love the Lord, Brother Norval, but I don't have no faith in my mouth. Well, I might have some, but it don't come out because I sat around and let my mind wonder about and think about my problems and why I'm like this and why I don't have no more money than I have and why I have so many needs and why where I'm at and, and what I'm going to be doing next year and I wonder what the Lord wants me to do and I just sit around and think about things and why my body is sick and what have I done to deserve this? And I let my mind, oh, sicko, sick, 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 sicko. You're a sick person. Hey, person, you have a sick mind. You're supposed to have the word of faith in your mouth. Do you understand that? Don't let your mind go sick. If your mind ever goes sick, you are messed up for sure. Keep your mind clear, my brother and sister. Don't let your mind go sick. I meet Christians all the time that has a sick mind. They don't even think straight. They think squarely. This is screw as they can be. You know what happens? The devil gets in your mind. The devil gets in your mind. The devil gets in your mind and starts telling you that you want so and so and you don't want what you got, but you want so and so. And, well, get your mind and say, well, you want this and you want that. And, well, you're a good Christian. You're a good Christian now. It's the Lord. So you love the Lord. You love the Lord. You love the Lord. If, if the Lord wants to heal you, he will because you love the Lord. You have loved the Lord for 23 years. You love the Lord. And the Lord knows you. He knows where you live. He knows what you have. And if he wants to heal you, he will because you believe in healing. You believe in healing. You believe in healing. You believe in this. The devil will sack your mind out to get your, to make, he sacked your mind out to make you have a lazy faith and a lazy mouth. And if the devil can ever entertain your mind and get your mind listening to him, he will rob you. You have no word of faith in your mouth. You have rebelled against the book of Romans and you have no word of faith in your mouth. Romans says the word of faith is nigh thee even in thy mouth. And God says those that are weak, let them say they are strong. Don't call 14 friends and tell them that you're sick and that I'm. Call 14 friends and tell them, I'm weak today. I'm weak today. I'm so weak. Oh, I'm so weak. I'm so weak. I'm so weak. If you don't stop, if you don't stop doing that, if you don't stop, if you don't stop telling the truth, they'll bury you. Now you didn't get that. You're telling, you say, well, Brother Norval, I call somebody and tell them I'm weak. I am weak, and I'm telling the truth. Yeah, I'm telling the truth. You're telling my earthly truth. You are telling my earthly truth. But listen to me. Look at me straight and listen to me. But you're telling a heavenly lie. You're calling yourself the way you are right now, which is 
which is total and total rebellion against the teachings of the Bible. Total rebellion against what the Lord has paid for you. The Lord says you have a right to call those things that be not as though they were. Call those things that be not as though they were. Call those things that be not as though they were. Blessed be God forever. I don't mean just call them three or four times between TV shows. I mean walk the floor, honey. Walk the floor. I am healthy in Jesus' name. I am strong. Do you know sometimes, now listen to this, do you know sometimes they bring people into my meetings that can't even walk? I mean, they can't, they're, they're so weak they can't even walk. Do you know what I usually do when they bring somebody in my meetings so weak they can't even walk? They're so weak and you're deaf they can't even walk. I, if I, maybe I get somebody to help me. If, if I can hold them up myself, I do it myself. And I drag them across the floor. I drag them just like a sack of potatoes. I, I drag them across the floor. I get somebody, if I can't do it myself, I get them to help me. And I drag them across the floor like this. We just drag them, feet and all. Just drag them across the floor like this and just keep confessing. I am strong and not weak. I am strong and not weak. I am strong and not weak. And I tell them, I said, now you say everything I say. I get them to say it. And they, they're so weak they can't even walk. And I get them to say, I am strong and not weak. 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 And I do it. Now listen to me. Listen to me. Look up here. I do it until God comes. You understand what I said to you? I do it until God comes. And if you've got enough faith to do it long enough, I guarantee you God will come. He may come in 15 trips across the church, and it might be 85 trips. It might be 143 trips. Just keep on going, just like you've got good sense. Keep on a dragon and keep on confessing. And this is where you whip the devil at. And the longer you do it, the stronger you get. Don't never show the devil one ounce of weakness. If the devil can ever detect any kind of weakness in your voice at all. Look at me. If the devil can ever detect any kind of weakness in your voice and he sees that your faith is getting weak and weary and tired, honey, you are whipped. He will whip you. Do you understand that? But the longer your faith goes without the manifestation, the stronger you get. The stronger you get. The stronger you get, 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 the stronger you get. You know why? God works in strength. God honors and works and respects and performs miracles with strength. God does not work through weakness. He works through strength. The devil works through weakness. The devil is a misfit liar, weakling. But not God. God is a God that has all kind of power of truth and honesty. Blessed be God forevermore. And he'll give it to you too. He'll give it to your body. But you have to show him you believe, Romans 4.17. You have to show God you believe, Romans 4.17. And for you to for you to show God that you believe Romans four seventeen is hard on your mind. Because your mind will fight you every step of the way for you not to do it. But you have to bypass your mind to get Romans four seventeen to work for you. You can't pay no attention to your symptoms. And your doctor's report that you're going to die. When you walk the floor and say, no, I'm not going to die. Devil, you can't kill me. Cancer, are you a total idiot? I curse you in Jesus' name. You, you can't even live in my body. Well, you dummy. Get out of my body, I said, in Jesus' name. 
turn my body loose, cancer. I'm talking to you because I call myself free from cancer. I call myself free from cancer. I call myself strong in Jesus' name. I call myself free from cancer. No cancer can live in me. No cancer can live in me. No, no, no. I am strong and not weak in Jesus' name. I am strong and not weak in Jesus' name. And you do it for hours, days, and weeks, and months. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? I've learned this. Let me teach you this tonight. When your body and mouth and voice gets tired doing it, sit down or lay down and rest and don't say a word and rest your voice and just worship the Lord and I love you, Jesus. And worship the Lord. I praise you, Jesus. I trust you, Jesus. There's healing in your name, Jesus. There's all power in your name, Jesus. And if you're dying with a disease, as soon as your body gets rested, take a little nap if you want to, get up and start again. Get up and start again just like a wild man. Get up and start again. No, you don't. No, you don't in Jesus' name. And if you get tired of doing it, before, before you get up and start again doing it in English, Lay there and pray in tongues for a while. And build yourself up. Build yourself up. You got to keep yourself built up. You got to keep yourself edified, 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 edified. If you don't keep yourself edified, you can't even obey the Bible. Especially like scriptures like Romans 4, 17. You won't obey that because you have to totally bypass your mind to obey that. Because that's a heavenly blessing coming down from heaven to earth. You can't confess like it is. You have to confess like it is in heaven. And there's no disease in heaven. You have to confess like you want it to be. You can't confess like it is. Romans 4.17 says you have a right to call those things that be not as though they were. Blessed be God forever. Blessed be the name of the Lord forever. You don't have to turn there. I've told you before it's up several times. Listen to what it says. As it is written, God said, I have made thee Abraham a father of many nations. Before him whom he believed, even God who quickened the dead, now listen closely, and calleth those things which be not were. Blessed be God forevermore. Now listen closely. Do you believe that the Lord Jesus has promised you healing in the Bible? Do you believe the Lord Jesus has promised to save your family in the Bible? Do you believe that? The 700 and some scriptures that God's promised you in the Bible to bless you financially, do you believe those All right, now listen, if you believe it, this is the way Abraham believed. And being fully, everybody say fully. Now look at me, look at me. That's the difference between you and Abraham. He believed fully, and you believe in part. Why don't you make up your mind tonight? Let me beg of you. Let me encourage you. To believe fully, fully, to believe fully, not in part. Some days I believe and some days I don't feel like believing. Uh-huh, that'll put you in an early grave. And being fully persuaded that what God had promised, he was able also to perform. Oh. Glory to God forevermore. Believe what the Lord God has promised in the written word is able to perform it with power. Do you believe that? Yes. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Blessed be his holy name. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Well, 
I'm telling you, get started in truth, you know. God is truth. The Word of God is truth. So I, I promise to give you a nugget before Al speaks, and he's going to give you a nugget before I speak. So he's going to bring the real message tonight, and tomorrow night I'm going to bring it. And he'll give you a nugget tomorrow night before I speak. Blessed be God forever. Sometimes these nuggets, sometimes these nuggets is about as good as the main course. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> one time I asked God, uh, like I told you, God blessed me one time strong financially, and I asked him why he did it. And I shared the testimony with you, which I won't do tonight. I've already shared it with you this week. I said, why, why did you do that, Lord? He said, well, you passed my test. I said, pass your test. Pass your test. How'd I pass your test? You blessed me, Lord, with these thousands of dollars of financial blessing. How'd I pass your test? He said, your soul prospered. Now listen closely so you'll get this. You mean to tell me, God, if my soul prospers to the point that, that I please you, that you pay off in money? He said, you got it. Now, the church don't believe that. The Bible teaches it, but the church don't believe it. He said, not only in money, I pay off in, I pay off in wealth with money, and I pay off in health. When your soul prospers, I pay off. First, I pay off in money. I want you to pay all your bills and keep a good name. I pay off in money. You understand that? God said, when you please me, I pay off in money. Because I want you to keep a good name and pay your bills. Keep your name strong. Because this is a good name is more precious than rubies. A good name. Then after I pay off in wealth, I pay off in health. Third John, the second verse. God says, beloved. Everybody in this building say, I am God's beloved. Well, you are God's beloved. And this, this verse means you. God says, Beloved, I wish above all things that you would prosper and be in health even as your soul prosper. Church members, visitors, why don't you make up your mind to help your pastor? Do something for God. And what is the city for the Lord? Why would you sit back and let your city die and go to hell? When there's men and women and little boys and little girls sitting in houses everywhere waiting for somebody to knock on the door and tell them about Jesus. And how much he loves them. Waiting. Waiting. Will you do something for the Lord? Your soul will prosper. It's good to get people healed. It's good to see people receive miracles. But there is no ministry in the world like winning souls. No ministry in the world. No satisfaction and no blessing from heaven comes any sweeter, I'll guarantee you. No blessing from heaven comes upon you any sweeter than when you walk in a house that don't know anything about God. And you get the whole family around the dining room table and say, let's talk for a while. Look at them and say, Jesus loves you, sir, and your wife and loves all of your children. Ask me any kind of questions you want to about him. He loves you and he wants you. And it's, the Bible says, every man that's born of a woman is going to take his last breath. He's going to die. And after the death is the judgment. Sir, 
I beg of you tonight, sir. Don't let your little children be judged by God by rejecting his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't let your sweet wife here, a woman that's went into the jaws of death to give you three or four little children, that you could have the pleasure of raising them. Don't let them be judged by God on a rejection basis of the Lord Jesus Christ. Sir, don't do it. Don't do it. Jesus loves your family so much, and he'll do great things for your family. The Lord will do great things for your family. Won't you let him, won't you let him come in this house? And usually by that time, and I'm talking to a family like that, look at me. Usually by that time, by that time, the Spirit of God is all over me, just like he is right now. And most of the time, they can't take it. You know why they can't take it? Because they see God. Most people, the only Jesus they'll ever see until they get to heaven is you. What are you going to do with the Lord Jesus Christ? By the power of the Holy Spirit that lives in your belly. What are you going to do? I know what Holly's going to do. You know why she's going to do it? Because her mother has the same spirit. She'll be doing something for God the rest of her life. Holly won't backslide. I don't believe Holly will ever backslide and not serve the Lord. Because she is so hungry to do anything for God at any time. That's what you ought to be. It thrills me to see a teenage, sweet, pretty girl do anything for God at any time, any place, anywhere. Well, her mother's like that. I knew her mother before Holly was ever born, and she's like that. Her mother trained her that way. She saw her mother. She rode thousands of miles watching her mother give to Jesus what she had, what she had. You say, what does she have? She has a talent. The world wants it, but she decided to give it to the Lord. She can go out tomorrow and get a job in the Atlanta Symphony Orchestra in the Cincinnati Symphony Orchestra, in the Charlotte Symphony Orchestra, in the Birmingham Symphony Orchestra. It don't make no difference. When you're good, you can walk in and get one. And when you're really good, they put you on the front. Right, LaDonna? They put you on the front. The people sitting on the front in a symphony orchestra, they're the best ones. You understand that? They're the best ones. She used to play in the San Antonio Symphony Orchestra, but she decided to give her talent to the Lord. And her daughter watched her. Why don't you give yours to the Lord? You can talk about Jesus as well as I can. I'm not anything special. You're just as special to God as I am. If I could win a soul, you can win a soul. If I'm willing to cast the devil out of somebody, you ought to be willing to cast the devil out of somebody. If, you, if I can tell somebody how to get healed, so could you tell somebody how to get healed. Blessed be God forevermore. Oh, blessed be his holy name. Thank you, Jesus.